Well, you guys got 10 most common mistakes when building your computer. We're going to be taking a look at these common mistakes. The first up is buying incompatible parts. Now, what is incompatible parts? Well, that could be a case that you're buying a, a Ryzen CPU for um, an Intel motherboard because you like the look of the motherboard. It could be vice versa. It could be uh, that you are trying to buy the wrong size motherboard for the case, i.e. you're buying a full ATX uh, motherboard, which is trying to fit into a small uh, micro ATX case, which doesn't support ATX. It could be a case that you are uh, buying a power supply, which is not powerful enough for the graphics card that you are using. If you've got a high end graphics card, it may need more power to actually drive uh, the graphics card. You could be buying a monitor, which is say a 4K monitor and trying to play games on a cheap graphics card which then can't drive the frame rates that you need as well as the monitor that you're using. It could be high profile memory like this Dominator Platinum here which has got very high profile to it and the cooler you're using is too uh, big and it basically impedes on the RAM and it won't be able to be installed. Then maybe the uh, cooler is too big for the case and you can't put the panel back on the side. It could be you're using a water cooler or radiator, which is basically too big for the case that you're trying to use. These are all beginner uh, mistakes. And sometimes even when you're a seasoned veteran, you can actually run into little small niggles during the PC build process. And this is quite common. So don't really beat yourself up about buying incompatible hardware sometimes. Uh, sometimes it does happen, but the one of the main uh, big reasons I would say about PSUs is when people buy cheap PSUs. This is another big problem when people are building PCs. They go out and put all their money into uh, building their PC, their dream PC, and they're going cheap out on a power supply, and it calls let's go and basically blows all the components in there. So there's many different incompatibilities that you can run into when uh, building a PC. These are just some of them. And I'm pretty sure there's plenty more, but they're the most common ones. Now, another really common one is forgetting to plug in the CPU power cable. This is your six or eight pin uh, connector up the top left hand side of the board. Now I have made a video showing you the five power points of a motherboard, which basically people sometimes overlook. And this is when the computer's not getting any power. This is for the CPU. And you need to make sure that this cable is plugged in to the motherboard to, from the uh, power supply and that is a really common uh, problem for people that are building PCs for the first time. So if you are having issues check out some of my previous videos on how to troubleshoot uh, a dead uh, computer and you'll be able to resolve that problem. So next up is another common one which is installing the CPU wrong. This is uh, an AMD motherboard. There is no pins on the board itself. They are built onto the CPU itself. If it's an Intel motherboard, the pins will be on the board itself. So there's two slight different ones. Now you need to put the processor in the right orientation. Otherwise, what will happen is the pins will get bent. And once they are bent, they can be an absolute nightmare to straighten and sometimes impossible. They can break off and of course render the CPU useless. And also if it's the motherboard itself where you've bent all the pins on the board, the motherboard could then be useless if it's an Intel motherboard. So bear that in mind. You want to make sure that you're holding the CPU in the correct way and you'll see on the back and on the front there'll be a little triangle you need to use your manual to make sure you understand how to install it. Now bent pins on the CPU on the motherboard is probably the worst thing that can happen to you because it's going to cost you an absolute ton of money to actually fix this problem. So making sure that it slots in properly is really important because if them pins get bent on that CPU sometimes it can be very difficult to straighten them and sometimes impossible to straighten them. And the same thing goes for the motherboard if they are really badly bent. Sometimes the motherboard are a little bit more difficult to straighten than the CPU. That's just my personal opinion and my personal experience of straightening pins. But that is just the way it goes sometimes and you will have to replace them. Another one is forgetting to apply a thermal compound when needed. Why do I say when needed? Well, sometimes uh, the heat sink that you're using that comes with the uh, computer has already compound on it and you won't need to reapply any sort of thermal compound. You're just going to have to install it correctly. 
if you've got something like this where it's a custom cooler you may have to uh, apply thermal compounds and you can just do it in the way I'm showing you here or you can just do the actual blob method by putting it in the middle and just clamping down on this CPU cooler it's that simple now making sure you get the correct pressure with your cooler is really important this is the Ryzen uh, cooler here it does come preloaded with thermal compounds so you won't need to apply any other compounds you want to make sure you get a nice even spread or you can use the uh, blob method and then push down and make sure that CPU cooler is clamped all the way down and you're getting a good connection between the heat spreader and the actual CPU cooler it's really important now this next mistake is a real big no-no I've seen someone do this on a live stream who was quite experienced at building computers and then they go and make a noob error like this which is a really big no-no it can cause major problems especially when you've got the plastic between the actual heatsink and the CPU it means it's not going to cool down and it's going to get hot and molten and start to get uh, problems with that CPU now you can see here uh, there is some clearance here and uh, you want to make sure you get good clearance for your cooler also the next thing is plugging in the CPU cooler cable uh, and this is important on different models you may get RGB on there and you may so also just get a, like a PWM and you want to make sure that's going into CPU underscore fan header on the board and just make sure that you're not plugging it into the CPU underscore pump or something like that because that is going to be for the water cooling pump and it may cause an error when you boot up the system now also there is power going to that port and it should still power it up but you will get an error message on the post screen when you're booting up now if you don't plug these in and it's for the fan then that means the fan is not going to spin up you will still have a big heat sink in there but the fan won't spin up and of course the temperatures will start to get a little bit toasty but at least you do have an actual cooler on the CPU itself as long as you haven't got that plastic in between you should be okay it shouldn't cause much damage to the system because obviously you do have a big heat sink on there but just means the fan is not spinning and uh, you'll be able to rectify that problem another problem is the wrong RAM or not seating the RAM in fully or having the wrong profile this is quite high profile memory and if you've got a large cooler you may run into problems in trying to insert the RAM properly and this is because this is very high profile memory making sure you get the correct speeds and the correct RAM is important for instance if you're using a Ryzen system uh, you want to be aiming for say for instance on the second gens minimum 3200 megahertz so if you're using a 2400 megahertz memory on that system it's not really going to get the best performance out of it and uh, you are going to see a little bit of a, a lack of performance so you want to make sure you're getting the best performance out of your system by getting the right type of RAM the newer third generations you want to be looking for 3600 megahertz and up and that is to get the best performance out of your system when you're buying your parts you can use PC part picker to get all your parts and make sure they're all compatible next up we're going to be taking a look at IO shield installation wrong so basically I see a lot of people doing this they will push in the IO shield and I've even seen them bending those little grounding straps back out of the, out of the way and this is another common problem you don't want to be doing that because they are grounding straps and they're supposed to be there also removing any extra standoffs always remove those or always add extra standoffs never use a computer uh, motherboard without those standoffs on there because it will break and you can break the traces on there another problem you can get is leaving loose screws in the case or any sort of um, screw that is not Put in the right place it's going to touch the board and it can ground out the board so you don't want to do that another common problem is the control panel header on the front of the case that goes to the motherboard you want to make sure that you've got these connectors in the right way because this can cause a problem where you go to push the start button and the system doesn't boot up and that's because you have got those all in the wrong places so check your user manual and make sure that you've got those plugged in into the motherboard correctly and that is another common problem with the power switch and also uh, the power and that is a common issue there to get those messed up now I've left this tool last because I think it's the most important and it's the ensuring you stay grounded a lot of people don't use the correct grounding measures to keep their system uh, safe when they're building it and this is an anti-static mat or ASD mat 
you can also use the earth bonding plug which you plug into the wall and it's only using the wall as an earth and you can plug in your wrist strap to that and it will keep you grounded i don't want to hear I'm living in an area with a low atmosphere and I don't get as much static or I'm on a tiled floor or I touch the case and I'm grounded. It's a load of nonsense. You need to ground yourself and be uh, properly grounded otherwise you are going to ruin your hardware. Now you might not see the damage that this does but static is real and if you don't have the proper protection what's going to happen is you're going to zap your hardware and it's going to damage the hardware you might not see the damage right away but it could start to foul or cause blue screens or all sorts of problems and it does happen it's not a myth it's real and you will see a lot of electronic engineers using um, you know anti-static uh, matting also whether they're using a strap or any of that sort of stuff so make sure you get the proper grounding for yourself okay now of course if you're a seasoned veteran you may think that I'm not looking really stupid and wearing one of those things. But to be honest with you, at the end of the day, if you've paid a lot of money for your hardware, why are you going to risk it for a simple, you know, £40 for the whole kit? It's not worth it, especially if you're spending £1,500 or £1,000 £1, on a graphics card or anything like that. It just makes no sense. You might as well protect yourself. And yes, electronics are more robust now than they've ever been but it doesn't mean that you can start skipping the real basics and the most important stuff which is ESD which is your uh, electrostatic discharge is a sudden flow of electricity between two electronically charged objects caused by contact of an electrical short or uh, dielectric uh, breakdown it's going to cause a problem touching the side of the case every couple of minutes does not mean you are grounded you will still get zapped if you're walking around your supermarket you'll probably know that when you're pushing the trolley you're going to get the odd static charge that gives you a big zap and guess what you're standing on tiled floors now if anyone tells you you don't need to worry about esd then they're misleading you or they're lying to you or they're not training you or teaching you properly you do need to worry about esd it's a real thing and trying to cut down from wearing woolly jumpers and stuff like that but if you're grounded you haven't got to worry about it because there will be no static build up in your body uh, that's going to basically uh, zap your computer components having these three simple things will help do that for you if you've got any other suggestions for people then leave them in the comments section below my name has been brian from brightechcomputers.co.uk happy new year to everyone see you in the new year bye for now now if you haven't subscribed yet hit the red subscribe button and then hit the bell notification button and click all to be notified when we upload new videos